In this video, we're going to be taking all this unstyled data, all these monsters and these generations, and turning it into this. Same data, much more beautiful. Let's get started. Let's start by getting the basic card shape. So we're going to take this and turn this into a div and give it a class of monster. And then in our style, we're going to style this monster class so that we're going to have a width of 100 pixels. We're going to go ahead and do a height of the same for now. And then our border, we're just going to make it really simple. All right, so we've got little squares here. And we're going to improve those in a second. But before we do that, let's get these squares in a grid. And we're not actually going to use CSS grid. We are instead going to use flex. And so we're going to turn this into a monsters div that contains all of this. And in dot monsters, we're going to make the display flex. And I uh, the flex direction is going to be row. There we go. But this crashes them all together and does this all in one horizontal scroll. So we're going to put in flex wrap wrap. All right, fantastic. Let's give these monsters a little bit of spacing. So we're going to put a margin of 10 pixels. All right, good, some decent spacing there. And we're gonna go ahead and put some padding of 10 pixels as well. All right, good. Now we have these not crammed up against the edges. Next, we wanna get monster images. Now the data we're getting back doesn't directly include the image. However, we can get the image with the ID. And so we can put in our image tag and in the source, we'll get the monster image, which we're going to calculate. And right, we can see that it is not showing up there because we haven't calculated that. But when we go here to page.ts, we can get our image here. And all right, excellent. This should get it correctly for us. All right, fantastic. So this is the URL. Thank you, GitHub Copilot. And these are not showing up where we want them. So let's see. This is showing up outside of the monster class. So let's go ahead and put it in here. All right, we're going to have to reshape this a little, but this is a good start. And that reshaping, I think, is just as easy as removing the height from the monster. There we go. Nice. And let's go ahead and put a div here of class. Actually, you know, let's not do it on the div. Let's do it on the monster. We'll make the monster itself a flex. And for the flex, we'll have the flex direction column. And we're going to align item center, which because we're doing column means we will horizontally center the name and the image. Cool. This is looking pretty good. Next, we want to take this number and put it in the top left, but without displacing the image. To do that, we're going to need to turn monster into a container that holds both uh, the monster content, which is what we've done already, and it holds the monster ID. And of course, we're going to have to close that. All right, and this is not looking good right now, uh, but we need, once we change our CSS, it will. So uh, Monster was doing two jobs. It was creating this outline and spacing, and it was using Flexbox to center this. So let's go ahead and split that up. So we'll keep the stuff, the outline, the spacing there in Monster and we'll take the Flexbox stuff and put that into monster content. Okay, now it's not quite so bad, but we want this to go up here. To do that, we're gonna be playing with the positioning. So our first step here will be creating a class for the monster ID and setting the position as absolute. So that on its own doesn't do what we want, but if we put 
top of zero, well, that takes it way too far. We're gonna fix that in a second. And right of zero or left of zero, you can see it moving around. So we got all the numbers right there. So we don't actually want it in the complete top left. We want it in the top left of the card. And we can do that by going to the monster class and saying the position is relative. So now it is up here. Uh, well, you could say the position here is absolute relative to the position of the monster. So this gets put in the top left of this. And to show that this does not actually interact with the image, let's go ahead and put it 20 pixels down. And image has not moved at all. 40 pixels down, but we don't actually want it that far. We just want it eight pixels and eight pixels. So all the basics are here. Let's go ahead and put a couple finishing touches on these cards before we move on to the generations. So first we'll start with the monster. We need the background to stand out a little bit more. So we'll do a light gray. There we go. And we'll go ahead and make it so when we hover over it, the gray color changes. Cool. And we're gonna leave the cursor as it is for now because they are not currently clickable. That's gonna change uh, soon when we turn them into links. Uh, by soon, I mean in like 10 lessons. All right, and so then the monster ID, we need to make this a little bit more subtle. So let's change the font size to 0.8 EM, a little smaller, nice. And then the color, a little bit lighter. There we go. So this is nice and subtle. You can see it if you're looking for it, but otherwise it doesn't draw much attention. Finally, now that we have this coloration here in the background, we don't really need this border. All right, that is looking decent. Now it's time to tackle the generations. So this is obviously not how we want to display. We want to make it so that you can see the main region and later they'll be clickable so we can filter the Pokemon. But for now, we'll settle just for displaying them. And so first to make it easier, we will move these up above the monsters so that they can stay in focus at the top of the page. This is also where we're gonna want them uh, once we're done styling them. All right, and so we're gonna remove the information we don't need. We just need the main region, Kanto. Uh, well, sometimes it's Kanto, sometimes it's the other ones, and the name of it. And then we're gonna turn these into little buttons that are lined up. So first we're gonna make the generations here, and each of these will be a generation and then we will apply our styling. The generations will be like the monsters in that it will just be display flex and line them all up in a row. And then the individual generation, what we'll do is we're going to give it some margin and then some padding and We'll do uh, a little bit different on the vertical and horizontal, a little more on the horizontal uh, because that's more pleasing to the eye. And we'll go ahead and put some border here so we can tell them apart. And then a little bit of background color, uh, just enough that we can tell them apart from the background. So we'll do the F9 just a little bit there. And then the text is just a little off black. So off white and off black. And let's go ahead and make this margin five pixels so closer together. And let's go ahead and justify the content here so that they are centered. All right, nice. And things are a little bit off center here. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that by putting the monsters here and just doing a margin of auto so that uh, that doesn't work. Uh, right, we need to justify the content center and there we go. So as a final thing, we want to make it so that uh, when we hover, it gets a little bit darker. 
So yeah, that looks good. All right, that's nice and subtle. And there we go. This is looking much better than it was when we started. In the next lesson, we're going to make these clickable and make it so they filter the different generations of Pokemon. So right now we're just using the first generation, but we'll be able to get the second, third, fourth, etc., as well as all of the generations. I'll see you there.